Hey guys, my name is Nagura and today we're going to be talking about what you should be doing before 9.1 hits. Now I know this video is a bit late because 9.1 is already going to be next ID, but I still hope that some things in this list can still help you out to prepare for the patch and, you know, just give you a general idea of what you should be doing before. So before going to the actual list, I'm going to make sure that I explain how shards of domination work. If you already know how the shards work, then you can just skip this next chapter, but it is pretty important to understand what they do because otherwise the list doesn't really make sense. All right, so in 9.1 there's going to be a new system for rate loot for items, allowing you to slot special gems, so-called shards of domination, into specific item pieces to drop in the rate. These shards of domination also drop in the rate and have special unique bonuses that can be upgraded. Every helm, shoulder, and chest that drops in a raid has these domination socket slots. And additionally, there are two more items with these socket slots, depending on your armor type. So that means you can have a total of five domination sockets in your gear at any given time. Now let's look at the actual gems themselves that you can put in those uh, items that have a socket. So there are nine different shards of domination. Three blood shards, three frost shards, and three unholy shards. Each of those shards has its own effect. They're either damage effects, healing effects, or defensive effects. Those individual effects work everywhere. So this like damage effect on one of the shards works in M+, in PvP, and wherever you are. There's additional bonuses to these shards if you have all three of a type equipped. So if you have all three blood shards or if you have all three frost or all three unholy, then you will unlock an additional bonus, a set bonus that is only accessible in the raid and in Torghast and in MO, I believe as well. So this won't work in PvP or in M+. There's going to be a detailed guide about this in the description below and there's also going to be, you know, details about how the bonus actually work, what exactly they're doing, what exactly all of these uh, unique effects do. I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video, but you can check that out if you want to. One thing I wanted to note still is that it's going to be incredibly important to have these shards of donation because they're probably going to be worth quite a lot of item level. That means that you want to equip all five of those domination socketed items very likely unless they're nerfing them into the ground later on that's not something we know yet but right now it really seems like you want all of those five items equipped for sure now let's go into the list of things that you should be doing before the patch now that we know how those uh, domination shards work so because of the domination shards and them being on very specific item slots we want to make sure that our legendary is not on one of those item slots so check out this list to see which slots are going to be domination shard slots for your armor type and then possibly recraft your legendary. Some classes will have legendaries that can only be crafted in domination socket slots. This should be resolved in 9.1 by adding additional slots for your legendary to be crafted in. For example, the legendary Arcanic Pulsar for uh, Moonkins can only be crafted in two domination socket slots. So there's going to be one additional slot that is going to be added in 9.1 for that legendary to be crafted in. If your legendary can be crafted in multiple non-domination socket slots, so if you can craft your legendary uh, on cloak and ring, for example, then if I were you, I would check the list of items that drop in the new raid, specifically the BOEs, because uh, if there's a BOE that drops in one slot and not in the other, then you could maybe craft a legendary in the non-BOE slot. You can also check out which items are going to be dropping from the last two bosses, because the last two bosses are going to have higher item level, the same as in Castle Nathria. So if you, for example, can craft a legendary in Cloak and Ring, but the Cloak actually drops, or there is a Cloak that drops from the last two bosses, then you might want to craft your legendary on the Ring slot, because that one won't be from the last two bosses, for example. Then there's going to be domination items with domination sockets that you can buy for Stygia. Depending on the armor type, there's one slot only. So each armor type has one specific slot that you can buy from Stygia. It will be 226 item level, so it will not be as high item level as the things you can get from the raid. But it's probably still going to be important to buy these items to, for example, get a bonus. So let's say you have two domination socket items and you would need a third one to access a bonus, like the blood bonus or the frost bonus or the unholy bonus, it would be really, really nice to be able to buy that item from Stygia to access that bonus. And it costs 2,000 Stygia, which means that I would have at least 2,000 Stygia farmed already now to not stress about it later on, right? Then there's going to be another item you can buy for Stygia that makes it 
uh, so you can reuse your shards of domination because once you socket that shard into one of your items, you can only actually remove it to be able to reuse it if you have this item. This item costs 2,500 Stygia and it is reusable, so you only have to buy it once. But I would still, you know, make sure that I have 2,500 Stygia farmed already now before the patch, so I don't have to stress about it later. So in total, that's going to be 4,500 Stygia that you want before the patch. Then about conduits, if you don't have all of your conduits and 226 already, I would recommend to upgrade them to 226 with Stygia right now before the patch. But keep in mind that this is like a lower priority. So if you, you know, really like them all for whatever reason and you have farmed a lot of Stygia, then I would recommend to actually uh, buy those Venari items to get your conduits to 226. If you don't, if you're struggling to get enough uh, Stygia for the 4,500, then I would focus on those other things first. Because I believe that in 9.1, you will still be able to buy the um, 226 conduit upgrades from Venari because it specifically says that you can only upgrade it to 226 meaning that I don't see a reason why they would remove that. You will be able to upgrade your conduits above 226 with the new conduit item purchasable by the new faction in Corthia. So if all of your conduits are not 226 yet and you have enough Stygia, I would upgrade it now. If you don't have enough Stygia and your conduits are not 226 yet, then I would not stress too much about it because you can probably still do it after the patch. Then Valor Points and Conquest Points will very likely reset. That's something they always do with Conquest Points and it doesn't really make sense for us to upgrade new items with old Valor Points. So I would assume that they're just wiping the points for everybody. I would also suggest if you can get a big upgrade from Valor Points right now, any sort of like trinkets or whatever, then you should probably use it and just upgrade it real quick. Then there's a bunch of things that won't be available anymore in 9.1 for you to obtain. So if you can still do it now before the patch, then I would recommend doing that. Namely, you can get the transmog from having 1,800 in any PVP bracket rating. So that's something, if you care about that transmog, then you can maybe still get that this week or this idea. Then the KSM, Keystone Master for Achievement and Mount. If you haven't done that yet, it's pretty easy at this point. So make sure you go and get it. And then there's also, of course, things like Ahead of the Curve, Cutting Edge, Gladiator, and so on. That's all things that if you still want to get it done last second, then you have to do it this ID. Otherwise, you won't be able to get that done anymore. All right, so that's it. That's all of the things that I could come up with that you can do to prepare. Of course, there's also things like possibly changing your covenant or making sure you have different kinds of specs learned, different specs, different classes, I don't know, things that come with balancing. If that's anything of your concern, then you should check it out for your specific spec or class. You can check the class discords, making sure that, you know, maybe if you have to switch to a covenant, it would be better to do it right now, possibly, because later on, there's so many things gonna go on with 9.1 that you wanna do, that you don't wanna focus on switching your covenants then, Probably. There's going to be extra catch up that you can do in 9.1. There's going to be a faster way of getting to 40 renown. We don't know exactly how it works yet, but that's something that will make it easier for you to catch up if you want to switch your covenant later on. There's a bunch of ways on how to do dungeons fast. That's something I can upload a video on. I'm not sure if it's going to be long enough to make a whole video about it, but you can come over to my stream and there's a command for it with clips and tips on how to get your renown up faster. So you can check that out. And yeah, thank you so much for watching guys. I hope this really helped you out. If you have any questions, just make sure you ask in the description below. Uh, you can also come over to my channel at twitch.tv slash Nagura for any other questions. Uh, there will be more videos in the future about 9.1, about what you should be doing the first week during the patch to get your character's power up as fast as possible. I will also make videos about Munkin specifically for Venfear and for Nightfay. Um, and yeah, I hope this uh, helped you out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.